Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 11 of the multi-platform series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Today, we're going to be discussing run length encoding, and we're going to look at the run length encoding algorithm that was used in the game Fantasy Star, which is a Sega Master System game, which used some um, animation where you were going through some cave tunnels and there were some nice uh, pre-rendered 3D walls and things. Now, one of my patrons asked me to look into how this worked, and it turned out that basically the animations had been pre-calculated and the tile numbers were being early encoded. RLE, run length encoding, if you're not familiar with it, is of course the encoding technology that's used for things like PNG and GIF. We're going to discuss a very simple form of it today, and maybe this will be useful in your programming projects and things. I did have a more advanced version that I used in Chibiacomus, but I thought this was a much easier version and it was still very viable, so it was worth looking into in these tutorials. So, what is run length encoding? Well, as I say, run length encoding is a simple compression routine essentially, and all it is, is as it sounds, you are counting the number of consecutive bytes that are run consecutively and contain the same value. So if you think in very, very sort of crude, sort of pseudo-crude terms, if you imagine that we've got this string that we need to store in memory and we want to compress it. Now, if we've got a set of digits that are ones here, we've got four ones, then we've got five zeros, we've got two twos, we've got three threes, and we've got one five. Now, you can see the length of this is, is relatively long here, but instead of storing these numbers just sort of consecutively, what if we stored a number and a count of that number? Well, we'd have one times four, zero times five, two times two, three times three, and five times one. We would then take out the times because that would be our program code, if you will, and this would become 140522331. And so that would be the run length encoded version of the data just here. Now, that's essentially what run length encoding is in simple terms. When it comes to actually practically using it and the code that the Fantasy Star game used, it was a little bit more advanced. It was still very simple, but it was a little bit more advanced. And essentially each block would have a header. The header byte would contain a top bit. If the top bit was one, then the block would be hourly encoded. The remaining seven bits would de declare a length. So from one to 127 and then the byte following that would be the byte that was going to be continued that number of times. If the top bit was zero, then the following bytes, up to 127 of them, would be uncompressed data because things like this number five here at the end, we, we've got nothing, to, we, can, we can't compress it and we don't want to store lots of five times one, four times one, three times one, two times one. We want to store five, four, three, two uncompressed block. And that's what this does. So if you look at the code here, for example, this is the compressed data, and this is the uncompressed data that made it up. I'll just see match. So you can see here that we've got a block here. The top bit is a zero here, and we've got a one. This says uncompressed block, and the uncompressed block is one in length, and there's a 255 here. And so that becomes just 255 in uncompressed data. Then we've got a top bit of one here, and we've got a four. That means there's four run length encoded bytes, and the value is 20. There will only ever be one byte following the block header for RLE because it's always going to be the same byte repeated. So you can see there's four there. Then we've got four uncompressed bytes because the top bit is zero, one, two, three, four, and you can see those just here. Then we've got a top bit of one, so compressed RLE, five bytes of six, six, so you can see them just here. Five bytes uncompressed, one, two, three, four, five, just here, and four bytes compressed FF. The final byte, zero, zero, this means end of file. So uh, if the top bit is zero and the bottom seven bits are zero, that is the end of the file. Now, obviously there would be a lot of better compression things you could do here. You could, um, if you had an advanced program, you could say, well, this one, two, three, four has been repeated from here. Um, and of course, you might want to have a, a run length encoder that could support longer lengths than just 127. But as I say, this is a very simple encoding routine, but I think it's perfectly um, good for you to learn, very useful. It does produce good compression, relatively speaking, and it's very simple to code. And that's going to be something that's quite important if you're writing your own programs. Now, if you need to create RLE data, you can use my AccuSprite editor. You can just save your data with the normal options in here. Now, don't use this RLE option here. This is for the Chibi Akamas format. That's a more advanced format. You would just save in a normal binary format here, and then you would use on the file menu here, file processor, and RLE compress 
for this first example, which will compress every byte of the file into a new RLE file. And then you will need to decompress that file into your program code. So let's go and have a look at the program code that will actually do the decompression today. Okay, so here is our test code here. We have two examples. The first one is going to decompress some byte data, which you can see just here. The second one is going to decompress the screen that you just saw. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, when it comes to the decompressor, we just discussed the algorithm. So the decompressor is here. We're going to pass it a HL source and a DE destination. We don't need to give it a byte count because that zero byte at the end will define the end of the stream. So what we can do here is we can use RLE decompress. We're reading in a byte here and we are then just checking if it's zero. If it is zero, then we are done. So we're just returning. And then we're testing if the top bit is a one. Now, the way we do this is with the M branch condition, which will check the sign bit. Now, with 8-bit mathematics, if the top bit is one, then the byte is negative. And so we're actually sort of exploiting that to quickly test if the top bit is one or not without changing the accumulator. So that's what we've done there. If the top bit's one, then we're jumping down to the RLE compression routine just here. And then we're taking the remaining seven bits, which is going to be our byte count. And then we're reading in the byte here from the next byte in the stream. And we're, we're writing it B times to the destination in DE. And that is doing the RLE compression, filling the area with a single byte. If we've not got a single byte and we're just doing linear data, that's uncompressed data. Again, we don't need to strip out the top bit this time because the top bit was zero anyway. We just load in the byte count and transfer a number of bytes to the destination. That's really all there is to this RLE decompressor, which is why it's so good for a beginner, for someone who just needs simple compression, not really heavy compression. The Acus Byte Editor compressor was working in nibbles. That was because it was designed for checkerboard mode one patterns, uh, and it was a nightmare to write. So I, I, I say this is um, this is a lot easier for you. I would say I'd certainly consider this first, and it's only if you need heavier compression I'd look for something else. So you can see here we've got some bytes that we're going to try and decompress. So let's fire this up and let's see what happens. So if I just press F9 here, we're using Win8 for this example because it's going to be easier to see the result of the displayed screen. So if I do call 1200 here, now you can see we've dumped some bytes to the screen. So if I just organize things a little bit here, Unfortunately, Win8 not entirely the most convenient for this kind of thing, but uh, it does does make good for good debugging. So um, you can see here, first we've loaded in four bytes of value 32, which is 20 in hexadecimal. And you can see these down here, these 20s. Then we've loaded in four bytes that are linear, one, two, three, four, and you can see one, two, three, four here. Then we've loaded in five bytes of 666. The 128 sets the top bit to one, of course, so these are RLE, and you can see those there. Then you can see five bytes, one, two, three, four, five. You can see one, one, two, three, four, five there. And then we've got an FF byte, just one of them. And then the zero, zero is the end of stream here. And that's unrelated to the zeros you can see in memory here. These just hadn't been set to anything. So you can see we've been able to successfully decompress that data. And that's the data we just saw in the screenshot over here. It's the same data, it's just there. So. You can see the, the RLE decompressor does work for the compressed data. Now, as I say, we don't just need to work with data itself. I, I, what I've done is I've exported this file using Z80 Amstrad file, save CPC screen here, and then I've compressed that with tools file processor RLE compress, and that has converted this image into a file. Now, if I just get up my folder here, you can see res all here. This is the RLE folder. Now, CPC RLE is the source file, which you can see is 16 kilobytes. Now, CPC RLE dot RLE here is just three kilobytes. Now, this has been compressed quite incredibly. Now, this isn't realistic for an average file. Um, it's because you've got these huge patches of solid color here that compresses really, really well. Now, in a lot of cases, you might want to design your file to be well compressed by your compressor. I did the same with my Acus Byte editor, my Chibi Acumas game. There was, a, there was patches that I knew would RLE compress well with the compressor. So that, that can, a design can be a good strategy. But essentially, um, as I say, once we've got a file, all we need to do is include it in our source here. You can see screen test is included. And then we can use the RLE compressor that we just used to dump to memory, but we can just dump 
to video memory instead at, at C000, and that will do the job just as well. Where is it? There it is. So we're just loading in the source data screen test, which is the image file that's been compressed. C000 is our screen destination, and then we just call the decompressor, and that will just decompress straight to video memory. And that's the beauty of the Amstrad CPC, to be honest. I'll just disable the other one there, and enable the RLE test 2, and do call, and one to triple zero there, and you can see we've got RLE test hello world. Now that's a slightly later version of the file. I added some extra text there just to make it a, a bit more complex because I was really wanting to thoroughly test the compressor. But um, as I say, you can see here that we're able to decompress the file to video memory just fine on the Amstrad CPC. Now, I think that decompressor will work great on the Amstrad CPC, but with regards to the Fantasy Star game and the Sega Master System, there was actually another trick that they did to make the compression efficiency better. Now, if we go back to our source data here, now the problem with the, the compressor is it will work great for consecutive bytes like 2020, 2020, but if you had 2001, 2001, it's not going to compress that because they're all going to be different to each other. So what they were doing is they were splitting the pairs up and doing those separately. Now, we're going to try that in a similar way. We're going to compress the MSX data for the Chibiko character, the mascot here, and we're going to compress that using RLE, and we're going to be able to halve the file size by taking into account the format of the file and making some changes accordingly. So what are we going to do? Well, we need to think about our file. Now, our Chibiko character is made up of four bit planes. It's a 16 color graphic, even though we only use four colors. And each of these bytes for a bit plane is consecutive in the file. So if we compress the file just as is with RLE, we wouldn't get great efficiency because the four bit planes are going to be unrelated to each other in a lot of cases. I mean, okay, some areas will be black, but um, in a lot of cases, there's not going to be necessarily much consistency between them. So what are we going to do? Well, if we think about our file, we would effectively split into four chunks and I've split it and I've drawn each of these four chunks in a different color here. And this represents the four bit planes that make up the file. And if rather than compressing the entire file in a linear format, we split all four bit planes into four separate files and then decompress them all separately, layering them on top of each other, we'll get better compression and efficiency and we'll still get the same result at the end. So that's what we're going to do. And I've actually added this to Acrosprite Editor. If you have a look here, we've got four options on our menu here. We've got per byte, which will split, which will store the entire file as a single normal RLE. Split alternate bytes, which will split odd and even bytes into two separate files. And split four bytes, which will split one, two, three, four into four separate files. And that's what we need for our four bit planes here to be compressed with the RLE compressor as efficiently as possible within the limitations of this simple compressor. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, the code we're actually using is relatively simple compared to the original one. Here it is. Now, there are a few changes. Um, Firstly, uh, we're now going to need to actually move in chunks of four with DE here. And we're also going to need to actually select our video RAM address before we write. And, and you can see here there's two out commands to select the video RAM address. Now, if we were writing to consecutive video RAM bytes, we wouldn't need to do this, but we're needing to jump in fours to write the next bank of data to that bit plane. So that's why we're doing that. We're then outputting the byte we've calculated in the same ways before, before we were loading it to DE. Now we're just outing the byte, other than that, it's the same. And really, that's about the only change. This, other than that, the entire code is essentially the same. Um, we're just loading C with the VDP control here, and we are just, um, as I say, we're just using DE now as an address in video memory rather than an address in normal memory. When it comes to using the code here, we're loading DE with the address of the first line of the tiles and then we're just looping here increasing DE four times because if you remember we're going to be effectively writing this byte this byte this byte and this byte all the way down first then we're going to be doing these cyan ones then the green ones and then the green ones and then the yellow ones we're going to do them in four separate iterations and that's why when you look here you'll see that we're backing up the starting DE, but then we're increasing DE and we're repeating four times. Our source data, our RLE data, if we look at the bottom of this here, where is it? 
here it is. There's four separate files and these have all been outputted by Acusprite Editor, converting the source file, which was essentially the same as the normal raw SMS file. It was just the same file, just split in, just compressed and split into four. And so we are now doing this and encoding this. And if we run our program here, well, rather disappointing, you'll, you'll see there's actually no change at all. So you might think I'm lying and I've not done any work. Well, um, let's prove it to you. If I replace one of the bit plane files, you can see that the colors have disappeared. And if I change this to two here, I think you'll see Chibico has gone kind of yellow. So you can see that these files are actually the four separate bit planes and the file size is effectively around half the original. I think it's slightly lower than half. And that's even considering that this file is relatively complex. So it's not doing too badly. It's still not incredible, but it's, it's doing okay. And um, as I say, the, the main benefit is that these, these bit planes marked as yellow and green bit planes two and three here, they actually don't have any data in them at all. So they compress down to almost nothing. Now, as I say, you could argue, well, you, you should just not write those into the file. Yes, of course, that's true. It's just an example of using an RLE compressor. And the point I'm trying to make here and the, the point that I think was most best to take away from Fantasy Star is they had taken the abilities of their encoder, their RLE encoder, taken prior knowledge about the data they were trying to encode and they'd re-optimized the data they were trying to encode to match their encoder splitting the bytes up because in that case it wasn't bit planes it was actually the two bytes that make up the tile map definitions the top byte is the x flip the y flip and um, if the tile is above 256 there's one bit of the tile number and the bottom byte was the tile number so the top one would rarely flip and would rarely change color so it would often be the same but the bottom byte could be changing quite frequently along the um along the screen so by splitting those two into two separate files they really gained a lot of compression efficiency i'm sure um, and as i say we can do the same with our own data if we know what the limitations and requirements of our data are then we can really optimize things so there we go now this was a quite an advanced um, tutorial in some ways. I've not really gone into massive amounts of detail on it. You're not going to need an RLE compressor in the early days. And it's possible in the later days, you're gonna be able to write something of your own better or there are better compressors out there. But I thought this was quite interesting to have a look at because as I say, it's a simple RLE compressor if you want to use one and write one of your own or you want one to sort of build up on. And also I thought it was a really fascinating example of how we can use knowledge of the data and think about what we're trying to compress to make sure our compressor can do a good job of it. Because if we're working in 64K systems, if we've got limited amounts of memory, we, we're gonna have to make optimizations. Chibi has used a lot of compression, even reading from the disks, just to get the disk size down to fit on the um, two disks and things. So uh, compression does become an important thing even ironically on cartridges because the Fantasy Star was a cartridge based game. So just because you're on a cartridge doesn't mean you've got infinite memory because you know you might hit the cartridge limit and you may also have a budget for your ROM file, your ROM chips. So there's always going to be limitations out there. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe and that kind of thing. I've got other tutorials on this channel. I've got more on the Master System and also on the CPC. As I say, though, the, the example we've looked at today, while we've only looked at it on the Master System and the Amstrad CPC, the um, algorithm would work on any system, which is why it's part of the multi-platform series. Um, I just It was just easiest to show them on these systems. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.